Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at this Toro Time Master. Customer brought it in and says that the key start won't work. He doesn't know if it needs a new battery or if it just needs a switch or what it needs. We're gonna go through the whole electrical system and see if this thing actually needs a battery or what exactly is going on. This is one of the newer ones. It's got kind of the curb personal pace feature up top as opposed to the older style, but all of the electronics on it are exactly the same. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button as we go along if you enjoyed the content. The first thing, if we go to turn it, nothing. You don't have to have the bail squeezed or anything on this one since it's got the blade brake clutch. Should just fire right up. Let's test the battery. You don't have to have the key on or anything, but if you test these two terminals with your DC voltage, I get nothing essentially. No voltage there. That's telling us either the battery's bad or the fuse is likely bad. We'll check the fuse next. We have the fuse right here. You can just kind of pull up on the tab and it comes straight out. So pull up on this tab and that comes straight backwards. Fuse is a 40 amp fuse and look at that. It is in fact blown. Got another fuse. Put it in there. Now let's see what we get. under 12 volts, but we'll leave that charge here for a bit. See if we can't get it to come back up to where it needs to be, or if we need to replace it. Take a look at the electrical here. We've got five wires coming off the ignition switch. Two of those just come down and connect at this charging port. The other three come all the way down. So the white one comes down and then comes straight out and it goes up to your ignition coil ground it out that's your kill wire your red one comes out and it goes to the fuse and then it goes back to the other side and the black just goes straight through i took off this connector from the other side i just unplugged it directly from the starter i'll show you that shortly i just wanted to show you that that black wire when it comes through it actually connects to the second black wire there's two of them here at the back side that connect to go to the starter the one just comes off the battery and the other one comes from the ignition switch. The power wire that comes off the battery here, it goes to the fuse and then up to the switch. It doesn't come, the red wire that comes down from the switch actually just comes straight through here. It goes straight, basically straight to the starter when you turn that switch. I'm gonna take these two Phillips heads out to get to the switch. Your switch is completely exposed here. I'll show you what connects to what. I have the starter motor unplugged down below just so we can test, but your red wires essentially, so we're off right now, your red wires will have no connection between the two. And then when you turn it to start it, you have a direct connection. All that's doing is connecting the two red wires. So it's sending a voltage down that other red wire to go down and engage the starter. As far as the kill wire goes, basically all it is doing on this white wire, it is taking that white wire and connecting it back to the black when it's off. It's grounding it out. If I can get a good connection here. And then as soon as I turn it on, it's stopping. Not getting a real good connection, but. So it's grounding that out on the negative battery terminal and that's how it's killing your engine. That's all that ignition switch does. When it's off, it has the white and the black 
connected. When it's on, those connections aren't made and the red connection isn't made. No other connection is made right now. And then when you flip it here, the two reds are connected. I messaged the owner of the mower. He said, go ahead, put a new battery in it. It's been two years. He normally has to replace them every two or three. Said, don't worry about it either way. It was charged up before he did this from what he says. There's only six screws to remove here to fully replace this. And there's, so there's one here, one here. You've got the one for this keeper because your cable is in the way. It's just this little metal keeper. And then you've got two on the back and one straight down through this side. I like to use just a 3 8 with the long extension. It makes it easier. If you notice, there's a longer one and that goes up top. That's in this slot here. The shorter ones are gonna be everywhere else besides this one. This one's gonna be a plastic screw. Drop that down there, but I'll show you that when we get a little closer. I'll just use a magnet, pick it up. So that's a plastic screw. It's a little different thread. So you want to make sure that that goes back in the right slot. I always like to remove the mulch plug. It makes it a little bit easier. Of course, get all that grass out out of there. You got the one here and the one on that side. Now we have the last one. It's right in this location. And that's going to be the same size as those other ones were. Then you can pull your release to drop the handle down. And basically it just pops straight up and off. Nothing really to it. It's kind of under the plastic on the other side. So you kind of have to pull it a little bit, I guess, but and then that cable is in between here. So you've got to get it out of the way, but it's not too difficult to get out. All of it is free. Clean all this up while you're in here, of course. This one's not too bad, it's only a couple years old. It's a little cage that uh, goes over the battery. You've got the terminals taped. And then it's got like a, almost like a little foam that sits on the bottom of the battery here. We'll take these, just that tape off the top. I think that's just for vibration. Got those off. I use a little bit different of a battery. It works perfect. It's the same size and rating and everything. Same weight even. Probably made in the same factory. I don't know, but they're a lot cheaper. This terminal is a hair bigger, but it works perfect. It goes on there just as it should. The other terminal is the right size. And then we're going to tape this down and we're also going to remove the piece from the bottom. Sometimes if they're real stuck, you'll have to actually heat them up. You use just a heat gun on them sometimes. Makes it a little easier to get off. And this is just to keep it from vibrating and wearing out anything on the bottom, like wearing out the plastic of the battery. That's all it's for. It doesn't have to be real pretty. It's not going to be if you're reusing the old one. All right, got most of it there anyway. Put that right down. We'll do the same thing with the battery. I'm just going to wrap it with some electrical tape. And again, that just keeps those wires from vibrating, keeps them secure on those terminals. Looks like I need some new tape. Good enough. Of 
clean this all off a little bit more and we'll put it back together. Gotta get this under all these cables. It goes back in. On this side, you basically have to line up this cable with that little notch, and then it comes over and straight under that piece. Once you got that there, make sure the wire is actually in this notch. Mine's not, it needs pushed back that way a little bit, but right here, it needs to be in that notch before it'll go all the way down. You can pull slightly up at the handle. It should lock into that first notch, kind of pull it backwards. And now we can reinstall all the screws. It's where it should be. On this one, you want to make sure the cable goes back in, in between that notch and the tab. Put it down in there. And again, that's the plastic one. It's got the real coarse thread to it. We've got the one straight down through here. We got the two over here, the short one in this location, the other one up top. Again, before you tighten that one down, make sure it's in that notch again. I'm actually going to put some anti seize on these bolts. These bolts up here at the top that get exposed to moisture real bad, they strip out a lot. Those other ones don't really get any moisture. I don't see it on those. their starter back in. Well, hopefully this has helped somebody out there that was having issues with their Toro Time Master with the electric start system in some way, shape, or form. Pretty simple, just a switch, some wiring, a fuse, and a starter. Battery, of course, attached to it. But it's not a complicated system. Some people get kind of confused by this elaborate switch. Well, it really doesn't do a whole lot other than make two connections on and off. So... Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed the content. And yes, I do know that I need to put the mulch plug back in.